Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, B12 induced peripheral neuropathy. Uh, we're going to try to keep this relatively short. Uh, B12 has been, a lot of times patients come in, Dr. Gates and I do a lot of peripheral neuropathy. It's a pretty significant part of our chronic pain practice. So there's a lot of different things that can cause peripheral neuropathy according to the research, what is the name of that research series put out by the medical profession, the neurology research series. I'm not the, book, the black book that we beat up until... Oh, the okay, the uh, Contemporary Neurology Series. Okay, so according to this Contemporary Neurology Series, which is kind of the Bible mm -hmm. for, the, yeah. for the medical neurology field, they list approximately 80 different reasons yes, absolutely. that a person can get, can get peripheral neuropathy. Uh, so a lot of folks come in and have done their research and have come up with, well, if I take alpha lipoic acid, or if I take B12, or I take this, and I took it and it didn't work, or I took it and it worked. So we're going to discuss that one mechanism of what, how that could potentially be involved or not be involved relative to who you are in your peripheral neuropathy. And with that, I'm actually going to defer over to Dr. Gates on this. He's done most of the research. He, he works most directly with our peripheral neuropathy patients, and I'm going to let him share his findings with you. And so I'm just going to say it anyways. I'm a board-certified chiropractic neurologist. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mm -hmm. Rutherford is a certified functional medicine practitioner. We look at nutrition heavily in our brain-based and peripheral nerve cases. Now, that being said, almost every patient with peripheral neuropathy comes in invariably taking B12. Now, you need to know that B12 deficient neuropathies, the, the prevalence or the agreed upon statistics of how many neuropathy cases actually have a B12 deficient neuropathy varies. Some say 3%, some say 7%, but it's That's pretty small. low overall. And so, first of all, you need to know that. Now, let's say you do actually have a B12 deficient neuropathy. We have to ask the question, are you deficient in B12? Are you, deficient? are you a vegetarian? Are you a vegan? We have seen those cases. We have seen those cases, and the critical factor was taking B12, and lots of times they may not absorb it, so they had to get injections. We had to refer the patient for an injection. They not absorb it because? And that's where I'm going next. Okay. And so commonly, B12 can be deficient due to something termed pernicious anemia, which is where the immune system attacks the factor that binds a B12. So let's say you eat a big steak. That steak has B12 in it. That steak goes into your stomach. Your stomach has to be acidic to break down the steak to get the B12 out. If your stomach is not acidic because you're aging, because you're on Prilosec, Prilosec, the favorite purple yeah, pill. Because you had uh, acid indigestion, which most of the time, folks, is caused by a lack of hydrochloric acid, and you're taking the purple pill to destroy what little hydrochloric acid you have left, which will, not, will then not break things down so that you can absorb your B12. Exactly. And so now... You could be having B12 for a <laughs> Right. And so now if you're not breaking down the B12 out of the foods that you're eating, you're not going to be able to get it out of those foods. And that's one circumstance. Where I was going before relative to the pernicious anemia is that the immune system can actually start to kill the factor that is secreted farther down in your gastrointestinal tract, terms intrinsic factor, that binds the B12 and gets it into your bloodstream. Also, other confounding variables can be hypothyroidism which will not allow you to make enough hydrochloric acid in your stomach. Um, so you can see immediately that it gets pretty complex pretty quickly. And so any clinician looking at a case of B12 deficient neuropathy has to consider all those other factors in terms of why the person is not getting B12 from their dietary needs. And then figure out a strategy to get that B12 into the system. The studies are, are pretty good in showing that if someone has a B12 deficient neuropathy and they haven't had it for a while, if you get them B12, in conjunction with some other techniques, um, they can start to feel a little bit better. Now, B12 deficiency neuropathy can also go hand in hand with something termed subacute combined degeneration of the spinal cord, which is where, because the body lacks B12, the spinal cord actually starts to degenerate as well. And it can be confusing for neurologists to really figure out, is that going on with neuropathy, or is it just the spinal cord problem, or just neuropathy? Um, there is some overlay. Uh, there as well. So that's what I would say relative to B12 what, and what symptoms might they look for in a B12 neuropathy deficiency? B12 deficiency neuropathy patients commonly will have numbness in their feet. Commonly they'll have some unsteadiness with their balance. Reason being is that the B12 tends to affect the pathways in the peripheral nerves as well as the spinal cord that 
involve things like sensing where your toes are at, which are critically important in balance. And commonly when we examine these patients, they can't feel vibration in their feet, they can't tell which direction we're taking their toe up or down, so on and so forth. Now, the interesting thing is that we see clinically relative to working with B12 deficient patients who have neuropathy is that if we figure out the underlying cause as to why they lack the B12 and fix that, and then you need to take the B12. <laughs> maybe you need to take the B12, maybe you're just a vegetarian and you're not getting B12. Um, and then we couple that with some rehabilitation exercises that we use in our office that basically shock the nerves back into life. We've seen just some striking and dramatic improvements in B12 deficiency neuropathy cases. And it's really gratifying because lots of those who are suffering with B12, as I mentioned, B12 deficiency, have problems with balance. And balance can be a major factor in leading to someone falling and fracturing a hip and it can be a disastrous event, let's just say it that way. So, so if you have B12 deficiency, okay, it, it's, it's a small percentage of peripheral neuropathy patients who have it, but four to seven percent, it's significant, you know. And if you if, if somehow it's determined they have a B12 deficiency, just understand you need to check these other things out. You're taking Prilosec and now you're taking B12 and it isn't working, guess what? That might be the reason. Okay, if you're if you have hypothyroid, you're taking B12, it's not working. It may not be that you don't have a B12 deficiency, it may be that your thyroid needs to be fixed. And I think that's really the takeaway point for this because that's generally what I hear when patients come in. Well, you know, I took B12, it didn't work. And then it turns out they have a B12 deficiency, but their intrinsic factor is bad, their thyroid is bad, their gut is bad, and so on and so forth. So I think that's a pretty good little uh, synopsis. And I think those are the important points for those of you who are researching or investigating the potential of you having a B12 deficiency. Should um, I think those are the takeaway points, and I think that should be very helpful. Thank you for watching, and for any other questions, you can go to powerhealthtalk.com.